Two years ago, I'd had the privilege for the first time speaking to the same UN ambassadors, and that's why they asked me if I'd come back this time, and they gave me a tougher subject. <laughs> but the first time I went there, I had spoken to them about the heart's hunger for meaning. And I talked about the four components that meaning has. And then I knew I only had about two minutes in which to mention Christ. I couldn't be overbearing. So in a 25-minute talk, it's about five minutes that I can bring the gospel in. And so I told them this story. By this point, they were listening very attentively. So I said, I have a parable to tell you, and we in India love parables. And all of the Middle Easterners and Easterners leaned forward because they all love parables. Nothing happened in my life of which my mother didn't have a parable or a proverb. <laughs> we learned it that way. I said, I have a parable to tell you. I said, it's the story of a rich man who had a huge art gallery, and he had a terrific son. And the son would go into the streets, and one day he befriended a beggar. And he started to see this beggar regularly, and he described his father's big home and the paintings and all that his father did in business and his family. And the beggar really liked this young man. But one day the young man stopped coming, two days, three days, and the beggar found out he had very suddenly died. So he went and got himself some paper and some crayons, and he drew a portrait of that young man. And he went to that home of the rich man and gave it to the watchman outside and said, would you please give it to the man because his son was very good to me. And I've drawn his portrait because I hear he has an art gallery in that house. The watchman looked at it rather bemused by it and said, all right, okay, okay, and sent him away. But he thought this was quite a gesture. So he waited for the right moment when the rich man was driving out in his car one day. He said to him, you know, a beggar came here and gave this because he painted this as a portrait of your son. The rich man took it. Nothing was heard. Some years go by and the beggar finds out the rich man had passed away and that they were going to auction his art gallery. So he decided to get some nice looking clothes to see if he could squeeze in. He did. And he walked through the hall to see if the boy's portrait was hanging with all the grandmasters, and sure enough, it was there. And the auctioneer came, and all these aficionados with their wonderful little lenses and all studying all of this stuff. And then the gavel was pounded, and the auctioneer said, we are going to begin, and everybody, yay, yay, good, good. He said, except there was a condition left in the will. The rich man said, this portrait of his son is the first one to be auctioned. And there was a moan and a groan. Nobody bid on it. The beggar put his hand into his pocket, got a few coins, and bid what he had. No, no counteroffer, gavel pounded, sold. He goes to pick it up, and as he's walking away, the gavel pounds again, and the auctioneer says there was a second condition. In the will, it said, whoever bids on the portrait of the sun gets the whole art gallery. So I said to them, ladies and gentlemen, when you get the sun, you get all of the components of meaning in life. <laughs> they threw their head back in absolute surprise. It was a wonderful thing to see. They were lined up. One of the Middle Eastern ambassadors, whom here I shall leave unnamed, came and grabbed my hand, and he said, Dr. Ravi, when I get to heaven, I am going to ask Lord Jesus if you and I can be roommates. <laughs> my wife did not like that suggestion. <laughs> I said to him, sir, when you get to heaven and you see the Lord Jesus Christ, you won't want anyone else for a roommate. <laughs> he kissed the back of my hand and said, you're right, and he walked away. When you get the sun, you get the way, the truth, and the life. 
You get all that you need to understand about reality within and without. And that is why in a world right now skidding out of control, in a world where the sounds of weapons are in many parts deafening to the ears of its people, in a world where sexuality is becoming desacralized, where homes are being attacked, where we search and long for something or someone that would provide for us the answers. The Lord Jesus stands tall once again and says to you and to me, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. He that has the Son hath life. He that has not the Son has not life and shall come into condemnation. That's why one of the most sensuous of all men who died in 1991, I believe, Malcolm Muggridge, lived so sensually for so long, indulgent, reprobate, derelict in his own ways, said he got so much fun by being a peddler with words. I had the opportunity of spending some hours with him before he died. A man who then came to found, find Christ in his latter years. He said this, we look back upon history and what do we see? Empires rising and falling, revolutions and counter-revolutions, wealth accumulated and wealth dispersed. Shakespeare has spoken of the rise and fall of great ones that ebb and flow with the moon. I look back upon my own fellow countrymen in England, once upon a time dominating a quarter of the world, most of them convinced in the words of what is still a popular song, that the God who made them mighty shall make them mightier yet. I've heard a crazed, cracked Austrian announce to the world the establishment of a Reich that would last a thousand years. I've seen an Italian clown saying he was going to stop and restart the calendar with his own ascension to power. I have seen America wealthier and in terms of military weaponry more powerful than the rest of the world put together so that had the American people so desired they could have outdone a Caesar or an Alexander in the range and scale of their conquest all in one lifetime, all in one lifetime, all gone. Gone with the wind. England, part of a tiny island of the coast of Europe, threatened with dismemberment and even bankruptcy. Hitler and Mussolini dead, remembered only in infamy. Stalin, a forbidden name in the regime, he helped found and dominate for some three decades. America haunted by fears of running out of those precious fluids that keep some motorways roaring and smog settling with disastrous memories of a disastrous campaign in Vietnam as the media charged the windmills of Watergate all in one lifetime, all in one lifetime, all gone. He says, behind the debris of these solemn supermen and self-styled imperial diplomatists, there stands the gigantic figure of one person, because of whom, by whom, in whom, and through whom alone, mankind may still have peace, the person of Jesus Christ. That's the Lord I present to you tonight. May you know him, and he will set you free. Thank you, and God bless you.